say, and I'm going to just give you an example of this, because I love this idea, okay, I love this idea of the and taking the, the measure at the end of the year or when everything piles up and doing that and kind of like bringing that into your, your uh, kind of your right now, okay? I love that idea. And one of the things that they say to do is, and I'm just going to say this one, it's kind of point two, is that they say put it on a chart, right? Make a chart. Make a chart. Put it up there. And uh, make a chart today and start filling it in tomorrow. Figure out, uh, and this is actually point number three, but I'm going to talk about it right now just in terms of this chart. Figure out what are the kind of the, the one or two or three main, what's your like main, your, your next big goal? What's your big goal? What are you hoping to see change in the next little while? What is the one thing? Or maybe even two or three things, okay? You can do a couple things. In the book, they say one. You want to see big change? Choose one thing. And they talk about it like this. They say, what is the one thing that's going to give you the biggest leverage, the biggest leverage, right, to move the rock? What's the one thing that's going to give you the biggest leverage to move the rock? What is the one thing that if you changed... In, in two months, in four months, in one year, in two, year, two years, it would, things would be so much better. What is that one big thing that you want to see change next, right? And then, so they suggest that you find that one thing. Okay, I'll give you an example. Um, Nippon Bible College, uh, I was the Dean of Student Life, and we realized uh, part of our mission was to, was to develop passionate followers of Jesus Christ, right? And so we engaged in that, and we realized, we talked about it after reading this book, to be quite honest, uh, I, I said, okay, what is the one big thing that we need to do more, right? And uh, we realized that it was to, 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 to spend more time with the students, okay? Now, we were, we were doing a whole bunch of other things, kind of like the 20-80 um, the the, the rule, right? Uh, in the book, they call it the, um, the whirlwind. Basically, he, he's speaking to the, uh, the Pareto principle. Pareto? Is it Pareto? I think it's Pareto. Um, dun, dun, dun. Yeah, Pareto principle. Okay, so uh, but basically, is that in the Pareto principle is the eighty twenty uh, or the yeah the eighty twenty rule, and it's basically I'll just I'll just talk about this quickly, okay? Uh, so so that you know, okay. So the eighty twenty rule is this: that in an organization, in an organization that is like fifteen to twenty people or or bigger, okay, fifteen to twenty people or bigger, they say that twenty percent. Of the people do 80% of the work. Okay? So if the Pareto principle is, is, is the idea that uh, in an organization, uh, you know, that's 15 to 20, per, to 20 people or, or greater, about 20% of the people do about 80% of the work. And I, arguably, you could say this 20% of the people do 80% of the work that matters. Okay? That matters. Sure, everyone's busy, but in terms of the work that actually achieves the goal, actually does, gets what has to happen in that organization to happen, and that is most important to that organizational, organization's kind of end, you know, goal or existence, about 20% of the people do about 80% of what really matters, okay? Okay. Uh, also, and then also, it, it's talking, uh, uh, that, that 2080 rule also applies with you personally. And this is where the book kind of jumps in, into it. Where 20% of your day, though 20% of what you do in your day gives you about 80% of your results, right? So as a pastor, there's about 20% of what I do during the week gives me 80% of what it means to, to like, the, the, the valued part of what people say, okay, he's a good pastor, okay? So 20% of what I do all week gives me about 80% of, of, of people's, like, uh, or, or, or the, the, of my success, or what it means to be a good pastor. 20% of what I do as a father gives me 80% of what my kids understand to be valuable fathering, okay? 
uh, mother the same, leadership the same, okay? And so an example of that is like, I come to work, I check my emails, I throw out, spend a lot of time throwing out emails, I check the uh, Facebook and I kind of scroll through and see what some of the people in the congregation are posting and stuff like that. I, I make a post uh, and I send it out there. I have conversation with different people that send me messages about different questions. Um, some of that stuff, very valuable. Some of it, not super, you know, super deep, just kind of regular stuff. Uh, I call people. I get answering machines. I get full mess message boxes. Message boxes. Um, my computer doesn't work. The sound system doesn't work for a time. Uh, the, the, you know, uh, stuff like that. So there's a lot of things that I do that don't get me results right now, but I kind of have to do them because that's what we do, right? You understand that? Um, so that's with all of us. And what, and what, um, what they, what they suggest in the book is that there is, there is, Right? Our, one of our goals is what, to figure out what that 20% is and then to figure out what's the best way to grow that 20%, right? To add to it. So that uh, figuring out what I need to throw out so that I can spend more time doing that 20% that really matters, right? If I, I, if I, if I spend... Uh, 20% of my time, and it gives me 80% of my results, what happens if I get rid of all the stuff that's taking up my time that, that isn't actually giving me any results, right? Any good results. What if I get rid of all that, okay? What if I can spend 80% of my time doing the 20% that really matters, right? What if I could spend 80% of my time doing the 20% that really matters? Right? And so figure out, you need to figure out what is the 20% that really matters? And then what can I do? What is the longest leverage? What is the, the thing that gives me the best amount of, of bang for my buck to do more of that? Okay, so that's kind of uh, what the book talks about there. I've probably butchered it. Get the book, read the book, you'll enjoy it. Uh, and so, uh, as, a, as a student life person, we decided, okay, we need to spend more time with our students. Okay, that's the one thing we need to do. And then we thought, okay, so, and, then, and so that's one of the things that we need to do, but then what are the things that need to happen while you're doing that? And we came up with three things. So we need to spend more time with our students, we need to pray with them, and we need to talk, talk like, Use scripture to give them guidance. Now, of course, you're thinking, of course, you're at a Bible college. You're the, you're the student light person. Of course, that's what you need to do. Of course, that's what we need to do. But how often did we do that? Because there were so much other things going on. And sometimes we'd have conversations with students just in the hall. But it would be a good conversation, but we wouldn't have our Bibles or we wouldn't. So then what do we need to do to make sure that? So we decided we wanted to do three things. One, <clears throat> Intention, and we started, we started calculating, not at the end of the month, right? Not, this is the 1st and the 30th, or 31st, 31st of the month. But that we would do it every day. We would keep track of every day. So I made a chart, and I had my dean's names on it, and I had my name on it. Okay, and you have to figure out what your chart, they talk about that. Figure out how your chart's going to work, right? And uh, so we made a chart for every week and kind of every day. Okay? And then we had, uh, we had student. Okay? We had prayer. In a different color, I think it was blue, not green, but whatever. And then we had scripture, right? And then what we did was, I think actually, no, it was every week. I think it was every week, okay? And so then what we would do in black is, we would say how many students we met with? Seven. Now this was, so the students we met with were outside of the students that we were meeting with regularly, okay? So more just everyday life kind of relationship meetings, okay? So we would say how many students? And then we would say, how many of them we prayed with? Five. Ooh. 
And how many of them we spoke uh, that we had scripture for? Um, we'll go five. Okay? And we did that every week. We talked about last week. And then we had set goals to how many students that we wanted like, to talk to. And we, and, and we endeavored to grow our number of students and make sure that the, the aim was, and actually very quickly, uh, very quickly we realized, number one, we needed to be reading, we needed to be in the Word more. We needed to spend time, not just at home, uh, you know, in our kind of the hours around work, but we needed to spend time in work, spending time in the Word of God. We needed the Word of God to be just we need to be saturated with it in order to be able to talk with a student and they're like, oh, I'm struggling with that. And you're like, you know what? That reminds me of this. Uh, in Scripture, this happened. In Scripture, that happened. In Scripture, God says this. And that applies to that thing, right? Number two, we needed to be, we needed to be praying, right? We needed to be praying every time that we were like meeting with a student. We need to stop and be like, Holy Spirit, you know, our Jesus Christ, through the power of the Holy Spirit, I pray that you would be in this meeting Holy Spirit, please lead me to the scripture. Lead me to pay attention to what I need to pray for. You need to be in this moment. And of course, of course, those are things that we know we need to do. And that, But so often, even just walking in the hallway, you forget to have that little, to be spiritually minded. You, you, you forget to have that little conversation with the Lord. To remember, yes, okay, I'm not alone in this. The Holy Spirit is here in this, right? And so we realize that we need to be Holy Spirit focused and be praying in the moment as we're engaged in talking to students. And then we need to be intentional about um, pushing away other things so that we had more time for the students that we needed to have meetings with. Okay, so what happened is, because uh, we wanted to meet with more students, right, at the end of, 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 of the month, and so and we really wanted to be by the end of the year that our the students would be, uh, would, would recognize that, yeah, student life was there for me, right? Like, like we really felt that, that student life, when I needed to talk, they were there. Okay, and that's what we, well, that was the goal. But at the end of the year, that, that was down. That always was down. So we wanted to bring that up. Uh, and so that, this is what we started. So every month we would do, you know, uh, we would have numbers there. And we slowly saw our, and then I would chart I would chart it on, on, on my number of 5 to 8, right? And I had, I, this was out of 10, I think, or 15, what, what, I, I don't remember exactly, but so then I would, at the end of the, the week, we would make a mark, and then we would make a mark where we are at, and then we would make a mark. And, and, and eventually, because, and this is what the, 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 the book says, that if people can see, and they can see it often enough. They know, okay, yeah, you know what, I need to, I need to be engaged in that better. Now this sounds, I know what you're thinking, if you're, if you're a godly leader, if you're a spiritual man of God, if you're a spiritual woman of God, <coughs> excuse me, this sounds very unspiritual, right? This sounds very uh, mechanical, right? This sounds like human reasoning, human ability, to make things better. I mean, is the Spirit of God going to use that? And I'll tell you, guys, yes. We are called to be... I read a bunch of verses, right? And I showed you so many... There's so many places in Scripture where it calls us to be intentional. I'm not just swinging the air. Saying, I'm fighting for Jesus. I'm fighting for Jesus, right? No. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm trained... Right? You know how many places in the Word of God it calls us to, to keep watch, to, 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 to be aware, to be careful, right? Right? To, 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 um, to be kind of, I mean, even the fruits of the Spirit, right? Talk about having patience, right? Talk about having self-control. Talk about, those, those are... Those are, those are expressions of being aware, right? Paul says, I don't just aimlessly, I don't just aimlessly throw, throw jabs. No, no, no. I train. We're talking about, uh, the Word of God talks about us being soldiers, right? Being in the army of God and, and, and recognizing that there's things that we need to do to equip ourselves. There are things that we need to better do. The, the, you know, and so 
this is one of those things that we can practically do. It's maybe a, a human thing. It's, a, it's an earthly action, but it can very much connect us to a heavenly intention. Right? In the same way that we are to be engaged in earthly things with a heavenly mindset, right? This is one of those things where we can be engaged in, in being more intentional, right? But being more intentional with the heavenly mindset. And you will find, now imagine if we did this as believers in Jesus Christ, all of us were this intentional about talking with people, praying with people, and using scripture. So every time you talk with someone, you intentionally try to pray with them, and number two, use scripture to, scripture to apply to their lives. Now, the first thing you're going to have to do is you're going to have to listen to them way better. So that's what we realized we need to do. Most of the time when we met with students and we didn't read and pray with them, it was because we weren't really listening to them. We had so many other things going on in our lives and we were focused on those other things, on the whirlwind, on the 80% that doesn't really give us any really good um, grip towards our goal, towards the prize, right? We were focused on those other things, and therefore, you know, a scripture didn't really come to mind. Uh, you know, I wasn't even really aware of what I should be praying for them, because I was focused on the things that I needed to get done. And the other, the other, um, the other deans, the dean of men and dean of women, recognized that, yeah, when we were intentionally trying to do this, which seems so unspiritual, it forced us to be more focused on the presence of the Holy Spirit. It focused us to get into the Word more. It focused us to be listening to them more and to be engaged and going, okay, I have tons of things to do, but that in this moment doesn't matter because the prize, the goal, our purpose here is to disciple, right? Okay, and then uh, allowing us to, to, to see that, to see our progress, to see weeks when this would go down and we're like, yeah, I know, I wasn't. And, 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 so, and then and this gave me an opportunity as the Dean of Student Life to talk with my deans and say, okay, we see, we, we, you know, the last two weeks this has gone down. What, what, like, what's going on? What, what are the other things going on in your life that are crowding in on this, this focus, which we've already determined and agreed upon together as we talked, because we did this together, right? We figured out what the, this was. We figured that it was... Uh, prayer, uh, uh, scripture, and relationship. So basically, spending time with students, right? So, so we recognized together that it was these things would allow us to achieve our goal better. And so that's why we put these things there and to say, okay, so this, uh, this chart allowed me when I saw things going down, it allowed me to say, okay, what's going on in your life? And it allowed them, the deans, to say to me, Adam, this is going down. What's going on in your life? And is it as important as our goal? And most of the time, it wasn't. Every once in a while, depending on what was going on in the college, right? We had other things going on. We had, uh, we had other events like, um, like 365 and some of those things where we spend a whole bunch of time. Uh, you know, you were up till like 2 or 3 in the morning. And then you're up at seven or eight trying to get stuff ready for the event. That's how it worked, right? Uh, for about a week, sometimes a week and a half there, right? Like it, it was a crazy time. So then this, yeah, so it, it made sense that that was going down. And so then as their uh, employer or leader or whatever, I wasn't their employer, I guess their leader, right? I was able to say, okay, you guys, you know what? Don't worry about that. I totally understand. This is what's on your mind right now. That's what you're focusing on. But next week, once this is over, let's get back to spending time with our students uh, and, and praying with them and reading them. In fact, let's try to bring these in together a little bit. And you know what, in the time, so we did this for about, um, I think it was about a year, it was about a year, but within two separate semesters. So, but we did it for about a year. And then you know what? I didn't have to keep doing this because it became so routine. It became so much a part of just what we did that we, we moved on to a different we moved on to a different goal, right? Because it became so much a part of just how we did um, the student life, like how we did student life. 
that we would try to, we would have a scripture for them that would connect. There would be a time of where we would pray for them and that we would be just intentionally trying to listen to what the Spirit of God was leading us to say to them, but also to listen to them to hear what was going on in their life. Okay, so this, this idea, I would say, read, a, read the book, get the book. It is so good. Number one, you know, lead goals rather than lag goals. And then number two, find the biggest, figure out what your goal is, right? And what's that next big one goal? What is the next big thing that needs to change? Figure out what's the biggest leverage. What are the, the one or two or three things that you need to do to get to that goal, that next big goal? And then figure out a chart that shows you what your progress is. Not at the end of the year, not here. Figure out a chart that will do it weekly or even monthly. I think weekly is the best. And then go and look at that chart weekly, right? So that you can challenge, you can, you can encourage others that are, that are maybe not doing so good. Or they can give you ideas of, how, of what they're doing so that they can achieve this goal. So that you can achieve this goal together, right? And so um, I would encourage you to do this. I hope I've explained that well enough. If I haven't, again, feel free to, to, uh, to talk to me about that. Uh, give me a call or um, uh, Facebook me or email me. Um, and I would encourage you to get a copy of this and give it a read. It's very good. I pray that you have a great day. God bless you.